Hey ladies, welcome back to another video. My name is Emily, if you're new and I create makeup videos and also business videos. So if you're into that stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like and notification button. So let's get started with this video. This is gonna be a little different. This is my journey having a tumor and endometriosis and also about my surgery recovery. So yes, um, don't go anywhere in this video because you might even have this and you don't even know. So girl, listen up. This is how I knew something was wrong. So for years, since I was like about 16, I'm 24 now, since I was about 16, I've always had really, really bad cramps, period cramps. Also, if you don't like um, very detailed things, you know, TMI things, this video is not for you. But anyways, if you really do want to know if you could have this, pay attention, girl, because this is some serious shit and I suffered so much. So anyways, um, I started noticing that I would cramp a lot since I was like 16. And I thought it was just, you know, normal that I was going through so much pain. Like a lot of girls probably had cramps and everything, you know, it was normal to me. So eventually things started to get really bad last year. So last year... I was suffering a lot because I started bleeding out. Yes, I started bleeding out like I was on my period, but I was bleeding for like three months straight, like straight. And um, I kept, you know, wanting to pass out. I kept thinking that I probably was going to get anemia or something because, you know, that that's not normal. Like who bleeds for three freaking months? So I was freaking out about like what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. My mom either. So I would just drink teas and everything and a lot of you guys are probably wondering, girl, why the fuck didn't you go to the hospital? Well, I didn't go to the hospital because the times that I did go at the hospital, they would tell me that they couldn't do anything unless I'm actually fainting, like unless I actually fainted at the hospital. So we were pissed about that, that they couldn't do anything. So um, all they were doing was trying to give me birth control, birth control. And I'm like, what? You know, I didn't even know what I had. Like, they had to run a CAT scan because I was, like, in so much pain. Like, I was, like, bawling my eyes out. I was crying. So, they did a CAT scan. You guys always ask for a fucking CAT scan if they can't see what's wrong with your stomach. And you know for a fact that it's not just something simple. Ask for a CAT scan. So, they did that to me and they freaking tortured me because they put some liquid in my veins so that they can see my organs better or brighter or something and that's when they saw that I had a cyst they thought it was a cyst at first this was in California they thought it was a cyst so I was like oh you know like I know I already knew I had a cyst but they told me like it's not growing it should come out on its own they told me that I was probably bleeding because of the cyst and blah 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 so they told me that I was going to need surgery to remove it because it was like five, four to five centimeters like big. So I was like, hmm. So I was like obviously scared, you know, like holy shit, like they're going to have to open me up. But no, um, turns out that later on this year, after the bleeding stopped and everything, if you're wondering how the bleeding stopped, it's because my mom took me to this place where they gave me some teas, like some herbs. And... Um, and I stopped my bleeding somehow because the guy said it was specifically for like cysts and like bleeding and all of that stuff like for like for the uterus and all that stuff so I drank that and that helped me so it stopped the bleeding so all of last year after those three months of bleeding straight it was gone so I was like oh okay I'm good you know it's, it's a cyst it's gonna come out on its own but no sis no this year, in the beginning of this year, like back in freaking January, February, I started bleeding out again. And I was freaking out because I didn't know what to do. Like I felt like there was no freaking way out. Like nobody was giving me answers to like what they can do. Like they didn't want to do the surgery back in California for some reason. So I was like, okay. Um, so here in Virginia, I went to go to another doctor and they checked me and guess what? Your girl had a tumor, yes. They told me you have a tumor, possibly a teratoma tumor. So what a teratoma tumor is, it's considered a monster tumor. They usually contain hair, teeth, or sometimes even eyes, you guys. Like eyes, like what the f 
Like, look it up. Look it up if you don't believe me. But they're very freaking painful. Like, they're very painful. So, um, yeah, they told me that that's probably what I had and stuff. And I was, like, freaking out because I was like, oh, my God. Like, no wonder I've been in so much pain for so many years. Like, that's crazy. So, yeah, that happened. And I continued to bleed out. And all they did in the hospital was give me birth control and more birth control. Just causing for me to bleed more and more and more for months, you guys. It is now about to be September well by now by the time you guys are watching this video it's officially September of 2020 so I've been bleeding out since like February you guys like off and on off and on I would stop bleeding at least like for two days in one month so I was in pain like the whole year apart from everything else that's crazy that's going on yeah so it was horrible the worst experience ever and um it wasn't until I went to this doctor this like specialist and she saw me and she did another CAT scan and they did all that good stuff and they were able to see the tumor and she also suspected that I had endometriosis which is these little teeny tiny particles in your uterus that come out and they make you bleed heavier and they give you more pain yeah so make sure that if you have like a lot of like period pain you know cramps and all that get checked girl like get checked so this doctor told me like we can we can either you know have surgery or put you on birth control and see what happens and i was like no mm -mm, no give me the surgery i was like give me the surgery please i've been waiting for this moment <laughs> so they decided to finally give me the surgery and it was freaking scary scary ass experience they scheduled my surgery a week after so it was on august 5th so I, i'm literally still recovering right now if I look normal, it's because I'm starting to feel a little bit better. But it's still going to take a couple more weeks for me to fully recover. So, yeah, I'm still in a little bit of pain right now. And I just stopped bleeding. So, oh, that's such a relief. I still have, like, some mild cramps. But I'm not bleeding anymore. So, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, the day of the surgery was very scary. Let me tell you guys what happened to me. <laughs> I was freaking out, everybody was super nice in the hospital, but I was freaking out because... <laughs> so they give you this like drug before you go into the surgery room, and they gave it to me, right? And they took me and everything, and the, anest the anesthesia doctor was horrible, you guys. Like instead of letting go of the liquid into my system like slowly, he just... Like just... Eh, like he just put that shit in and I was like... Like, you guys, I was fucking dying. Like, I felt my freaking body was like, it felt like it was burning. It felt like it was freaking on fire. And I was just like, mm, like moaning and making noises and looking around and feeling so confused and horrible. So I was just looking at the guy, like eyeballing him because I felt like crap. <laughs> but then I fell asleep, so. Yeah, I fell asleep and I woke up. When I woke up, I woke up before they were moving me onto another bed to take me to the recovery room. So they had to like put me back to sleep because they hadn't given me like pain medication, like like another dose of pain medication yet. So they just told me like from one from a one to ten how bad is your pain right now, and I was like mm, ten. <laughs> so they gave me they gave me another shot and they put me back to sleep, and then I woke up in the recovery room. And I don't know what I was telling the nurse, you guys. Like, this was so freaking funny. I don't know what I was telling this nurse. But shout out to her because I was just talking to her the whole time. And I asked her for water because I was nauseous. And then I asked her for ice and she brought me that good, good ice. And I was just munching on ice the whole time. Talking to her about nonsense, you guys. I don't even remember what I was saying. You know when you get drunk and you kind of black out and you don't remember anything the next day? That's how I felt. Like, I just remember, like, little little moments <laughs> so that happened and um then they took me to the room where my boyfriend was and we like talked and we were like so grateful that everything went good and everything and it was so scary because i was in there by myself without him or anyone because my parents and everybody else is back in california so all i have is like him here and yeah anyways um so that happened and let me tell you guys what happened right after surgery we went to Walmart right after surgery, yes. We went to Walmart and I don't remember this, but I'm guessing I had the munchies while I was on the anesthesia. 
So I was walking around, we were grabbing chips. I was grab I grabbed an Arizona, like one of those big um, bottles of Arizona gallons. Yeah, like I grabbed one of those so random and it was just, it was funny. And I don't remember half of it, so it's even funnier. And then let me tell you guys something funny, hold on, don't go nowhere. <laughs> Let me tell you, so when I went to get my prescription, that's why we went to Walmart for my prescription. So when I went to get my prescription, um, the lady was like, do you know how to, do you, have you ever used this before? It's so that, it's this um, powder so that I don't feel constipated and so that the air comes out because they like blow up your stomach with air so that they can like get in there, you know, because they made three different holes on my stomach. They made one on my left side, one on my right, and then one, um, they opened my belly button. So, yeah, it was painful. So they gave me that because I was going to be gassy and I was going to feel air coming up and down and it was going to feel nasty, So and I was going to get constipated. So they told me to drink that daily, and the lady was explaining to me, you know, when you go to the pharmacy, they tell you, like, okay, this is how you use it if you never used it before, blah, 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 here you go, you know? Okay, well, the lady was explaining to me, and I was so, like, high, I guess, on anesthesia, that <laughs> I started telling the lady, oh my god, like, thank you, like, I really needed this because I'm, I'm gonna be constipated, and I don't want to be like that because it's gonna be painful, and I was just telling her all of these things, and my boyfriend was just letting me talk to her, and I was, like, so, like, so naive and weird because I was high pretty much and the next day I was freaking out my boyfriend told me everything oh my god <laughs> I can't believe it but yeah that's what happened that's how my surgery went but here's my recovery you guys I couldn't sleep I couldn't freaking sleep I had to be facing up and I usually sleep on my side so that was freaking torture I couldn't sleep so I was facing up I was still bleeding out keep in mind um, I was still cramping, especially because of the surgery. My cuts hurt. My lower stomach was just sore. Um, I did use like a waist trainer, like not too tight, but I did wear one because, you know, you need that support. Because when you sneeze or something, you feel like your freaking insides are falling out. It, it's horrible. So, yeah, um, that my recovery was really, really good so far. It's been, it's been good so far. I didn't get no infection or anything, but I did faint. I did faint like three days after the surgery. I was in the shower and my boyfriend was helping me shower. And um, I guess because you know how it gets hot in the restroom, it started to get hot and foggy and I felt like I couldn't breathe. So I felt like I couldn't breathe and I started blacking out like bad. Like I started like wanting to fall and I told him I'm gonna fall. And he grabbed me and took me out and like sat me down like on our little carpet thing. And obviously he put a towel first because, you know, I could get an infection if I'm just out of surgery. So he sat me down and he like covered me up. And you guys, I love this man. He takes such good care of me. So that happened. And um, it was hard for me to eat too. I would get nauseous. And it, it was just, it, it was a, a good recovery, but very difficult at the same time because they did a, a D and C, D and C, that's what the procedure is called, so that they can take out the endometriosis, which is those little tiny particles that I told you guys that cause the heavy bleeding and everything. So it turns out that my uterus has very thick walls um, from a procedure that they did to me when I was like 15. So the doctor had to scrape all of that out because she said I had like a lot of junk, like a lot of like bloody junk stuck from years that that's why I was having so much pain and that's why I was like bleeding out so it it was just it's horrible so they did a DNC kind of like when somebody has like an abortion when somebody has an abortion they, they do that procedure where they scrape everything out and take it out so they did that to take out all of that extra nasty stuff that was stuck there and also my tubes were like blocked from my ovaries almost so yeah she had to take all that out and she took out the endometriosis particle thingies it was just starting she said at the entrance so she got rid of all that and then they did the tumor removal like they they cut it they put in the two cameras through both sides of my hips so that's where they opened me up and they put in the cameras and through the belly button that's where they like cut it and took it out but um yeah she told me the doctor told me that it had hair it had a lot of black hair, the tumor. It's a teratoma tumor if you guys want to look it up. 
but yeah it's crazy uh, but yeah like my health is a lot better now I feel so much more like more motivated this is why I've been away from YouTube and I haven't been consistent with my things the only place that I've been very consistent on is like on Instagram so if you don't follow me there follow me now girl because I post many tutorials and I keep you guys updated on everything that I'm doing and with my business my lip glosses and everything and the new stuff that's coming in and just health updates everything 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 Instagram so follow me thank God I'm like so so happy and I feel so blessed <clears throat> I'm gonna cry <laughs> okay and I feel so blessed <laughs> um, to be good now, to be healthy and, and to feel good. You know, because if you feel pretty hopeless, I mean, to be like that for months, like think about it, like you can't do anything. You can't pick anything up. You can't go to the gym. Like my, my usual activities were going to the gym, filming, YouTube, all of that good stuff. And that was so hard. It was so hard to get out of bed just to do any of those things even to film the only thing that I did keep myself like busy with was Instagram I started trying to grow my Instagram because I needed a distraction and that was the only thing keeping me sane throughout those months of pain and torture I'm so grateful like for my boyfriend too because he's been like taking care of me like the whole time like this whole whole time like he took some time off to take care of me during the surgery and the recovery because I couldn't even go to the restroom by myself. I couldn't get off the bed by myself. It was it was horrible and then the painkillers and birth control just it was horrible. But yeah, um I do feel way better now. Like I said, I'm not bleeding anymore, I'm not in pain as much anymore. So it feels really nice to get back on track and start trying to grow my YouTube channel. Um, and come back here and talk to you guys and also my Instagram and all of that and my business So yeah, um, thank you guys for those of you that have been through this journey with me this whole time Because I know that there's a lot of you that follow me on Instagram and message me and tell me at the time like hey like I hope you're doing good or my your good wishes or you guys have also told me you know like oh I hope your surgery goes good so I'm very very grateful for all of you guys so yeah if you haven't subscribed girl go ahead and subscribe because it helps me <laughs> subscribe like this video and please leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions about what happened to me <laughs> comment down below and don't forget that this this can happen to any of you and there's a reason why I'm bringing this video up because I'm trying to bring awareness to every female out there to be careful and try to pay attention to your body and, and see and see what could be you know a possibility you know like you can possibly have you know a tumor endometriosis anything cancer you know like I got lucky that that tumor wasn't cancerous so yeah like I'm just bringing this video up for awareness and um, yeah so yeah guys I'm gonna come up with a schedule to be more consistent here on YouTube every week so don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below and ask me any questions. But yeah, thank you for watching.